Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Etika Battles. Um, apologies on the delay between battles that I have right now. Um, I'm currently trying to get a little ahead of my job, so um, I had to put in a few extra hours. But um, anyways, this is against a random Wi-Fi opponent, so I hope you enjoy. So you saw that I stopped this Tyranitar from setting up those stealth rocks, and uh, I think Salvia is really really good at that because not a lot of people know she knows Taunt, and when he switched out, I just assumed that it would be something fast. He has a Gengar on his team, so I thought it would be that, but I'm not complaining about a Landorus being paralyzed, trust me. But he goes for the U-turn, and I at this point you can tell that I forgot how strong Landorus is, and it one hit KO Salvia. And I have defense EVs, and Salvia's defense is, I mean, well, Superior's defense in general is pretty good, so... That was a total waste on my part, but Salvia, your sacrifice will make way for the team to perform somewhat well later on. But it's kind of like not my team that went down this time, it was sort of me. I kind of messed up. I mean, look at this, I let Buffalo get tricked, and now I have a Choice Scarf, which isn't that bad. I mean, so I'm thinking that I can work this out, but the only thing is that this Rotom Wash has a lot of resistances. The only thing that I can hit it neutral with is my um, Wild Charge. I could have done Afro Break, but he has a Fortress and a Tyranitar and a Gengar and all things which normal hits really don't do anything against, so I just played it safe and went for the Wild Charge. It would hit mostly everything for neutral damage, but um, so I got this Rotom pushed down to the wire, but the thing is I'm burned, so if he recovers, that, there's no way I'm bringing that HP down again, and this is when we go into Jirachi. Now, Soul Glow, you know, I kind of messed up, I left her in there, but you know what? That's why I'm saying I hate sacrificing Pokemon, but at this point, I have to look at Soul Glow that way. I mean, she means a lot to me and my team especially, but, you know, it, it, you gotta do what you gotta do. Soul Glow, forgive me for this one, please. Anyway, so he goes for the Wish, and I continue to Wild Charge because I don't want anything coming in and getting a free switch. I mean, it could have been Landorus, and this is what I got scared of. He has that Landorus. If it comes in on that, you know, that Wild Charge, it's not gonna take any damage, and he could get the Wish. So, he goes into his Rotom Wash, but I thought it would be the Landorus, so I go into my Weavile, aka X23, and I realize I'm screwed in this matchup. So, yeah, you can already tell I'm making some really, really bad plays, but, you know, I, I'm, de I'm dedicated in coming through for my Pokemon. Okay, so things are a little bit tense now. Um, he has his Tyranitar out, and I go for Cicada, and I'm thinking that I'll be able to hit him with a Focus Blast, and it'll do a good amount of damage. Maybe it won't kill him because of the Sandstorm, but it should do a lot. And he spends in his Jirachi instead. Takes it right to the face, but um, it doesn't really kill it. However, it does a good chunk. I mean, it's neutral damage, so whatever, and it's non-stab too. Anyway, so Cicada's in there, and um, I don't want to sacrifice Cicada yet, so I switch out, but he goes for a wish. I'm guessing he's trying to heal something else on the team? Jesus Christ. And so I go into Virgo, because I don't want to get Paralysis, I don't want to get Thunder Wave, because I thought he had that, but he, he didn't eventually. So I realized that Nidoking King and Nidoking Queen can usually be faked to have a choice item, because they don't take Sheer Force, I mean, they don't take Life Force damage thanks to Sheer Force, so... I stay in there and I keep thunderbolting, making him think that I'm choice. Ah! Never assume anything from a Nidal King or a Nidal Queen. I was not choice, man. It's life work. But, um, so he takes the Ice Beam, and um, that's a really, really good play for me, so luckily that worked out. 
And uh, I go into Cicada because I have Giga Dream, so I'll be able to hit this Rotom Wash with something. But he goes for a Hydro Pump, and um, it's going to do, uh, it's going to kill me, of course, because Cicada has absolutely no defense whatsoever. So that's a sacrifice I had to make, but um, I had a strategy in mind to take down the rest of his team. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but hey. So, I guess a lot of people forgot that Weavile can learn low kick, but um, I hit Tyranitar in his purple belly and it takes it down, thank goodness. So, that's another major threat that's out of the way. Then again, most of his team was major threats, so most of them are out of the way at this point. Anyways, goes into his fortress now and I have absolutely nothing to hit this thing with, so I switch out and I go back into Nidoqueen. And uh, I have Flamethrower, so I'll be able to hit this thing pretty much all day, every day, whatever. And um, so. Um, the thing is, he goes into his Gengar, and I just go for a Thunderbolt because, you know, I was predicting, over-predicting, I didn't want to hit anything with the wrong move, so Thunderbolt seemed to hit everything neutral, and it did a really, really good amount of damage to Gengar, and now look at the sheer bulk of Nidoqueen, a Shadow Ball, I have no special defense investment, and Gengar has really good special attacks, so Nidoqueen took that especially well. It's a very impressive Pokemon, and that's why I prefer running Nidoqueen over Nidoking. Its bulk comes useful in a lot of situations. So he goes into his Rotom Wash. It has a Life Orb, so I'm planning on wearing it down with the Life Orb and the Sandstorm. So I go into my Lapras to take the Hydro Pump, but it misses, so um, that works out for me. Well, not especially, because I wanted him to take Life Orb damage, so I switch back out. Thankfully my strategy works and the life orb with the sandstorm takes it down. And so now all he has left is his fortress. So I go for the flamethrower and I don't think I have to explain to you in perfect detail how the end of the match goes, but um thankfully I'm able to help my Pokemon pull through. So um thankfully everything really worked out. So they, they really did a great job and Nidal Queen, honestly. I don't want to tell you to, you know, not run Nidal King or anything. Nidal King is good in his own ways, but sometimes look at Nidal Queen's bulk. It really has impressive potential. That was a great match, Richard. Anyways, so please don't be a stranger. Add me on Facebook. You can talk to me whenever. I'm usually on Smogon. Call my business phone as well. It doesn't matter. Anyways, so um, that was a really, really good battle. And um, I just feel good that I'm able to contribute to the Pokemon community a lot easier now. And so... Please, if you have any questions, comments, rates, or concerns, just bring them up with me, um, and I hope you enjoy the video. Take care.